If you make jewelry, you've probably wished for ways to help you organize, sort, and design your projects. Also, if you like sparkly things, you may have tried to use flat back rhinestones but found them fiddly to manage. Today I have for you a review of two products that just might help you in those endeavors. Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another Friday Findings video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. So the folks at BB Crafts contacted me and asked if I'd like to review some of their products. I had never heard of them before or done business with them. So I took a look and uh, I was impressed with the array of things they have. They don't have super top quality items like uh, sterling, a lot of sterling silver or gold filled, but they do have some very useful craft items at good prices. So the first thing they sent me was a, this set of three bead design boards. You've seen boards like this in the craft stores. This one is pretty basic. It's got three channels for stringing beads for a necklace. I kind of like this better than the one I have because mine comes all the way to the end and then there's just these two little triangular sections for beads and I like having these bigger sections here and then there's more as you go back. So it's a pretty standard design board. It goes to 13 inches so you could do a 26 inch necklace or even a little bit longer if you go around the ends. You could use these straight ends for designing bracelets. And this board is 16 by 9 so it's a nice just good thing to have and it's good to have more than one of these. I've now got several and I find I have different projects going so it's nice to have more than one. This one was the reason I requested this as an item to review because I had never seen anything like this before. It's a bracelet design board. Isn't this cool? I thought it was such a brilliant idea. It's got all your measurements, your diameters in millimeters. Now being an American, you know when I was in school we were told that Oh, by the time we'd grown up, we'd be uh, using the metric system, and I kind of wish it was true. Once I got into jewelry making, I was like, why are we using fractions of inches? Oh, my goodness. But we are, and that's what we know. So what I did was I took a little time with a ruler last night and printed these on my P-Touch, which I'll stick down. I just wanted to show you the board the way it comes from the manufacturer. But I'll stick these down in these little spaces just to remind me uh, of what the sizes are. Now if you are designing a bracelet with all round beads, hello, <laughs> this is awesome. It will really help you. It can get tricky though if your beads aren't round, like if you have one like this, because how do you put it in there? You can kind of go like that. It, so it's a little tougher to see and also to get an accurate measurement. I haven't put together any bracelets based on these. You can be certain that these measurements aren't going to be absolutely accurate if only because the thickness of your beads is going to determine the size of your bracelet. I've got these little lamp work beads here. You could see in order to get them positioned you kind of have to carefully place them. But you know that's true on any bead board. The ones with the channels they still kind of flop over and at least this they kind of stand up here. And again, if you have unusually shaped beads like these tabs that have a hole go th going through them that way, and I like to make bracelets with beads like this because they lie very nicely on the wrist. Because that hole isn't in exactly the right spot, I'm not going to get a 100% accurate idea of the size, but just like any bracelet designing you're going to have to get close and then refine your fit later. And it also depends on the type of clasp you have, if you can accurately gauge how big that clasp, how much space it's going to take up. Again, you can sort of get an idea, but I do love that all the beads sit in here so nicely. These ones, these furnace glass beads are awesome because they're kind of flat. So you can really put those in here. You can also pop some beads in the middle and 
if you need to store them, if you're thinking about using them. So I was really excited about this and I'm excited to sit down and actually design a bracelet with this and see just how helpful it really is in getting an accurate size. I'll be interested to see that. By the way, this bracelet board is 13 and a half by 10 and a quarter inches. If you need to know that, it will fit in your space. And honestly, I didn't even give this one a second look when I was choosing products. I just, I was looking at that bracelet board. I was like all excited about that one. I have been doing a lot of bead weaving in the weeks since BB Craft agreed to send me these products. And I noticed that many of the beading teachers use these gorgeous bead beat it boards they're called and it's a soft thing with a, a beading mat in the middle and these soft edges often with beautiful fabric and I said oh I think I want one of those and then I went and priced them so maybe not so when this came I said yahoo the inside the inner diameter is just over seven by nine inches and I have here a little beading mat if any of you have been watching my videos since the very beginning, this is actually what I recorded my first videos on. It's a mess, but it still works great. But you could actually just take a beading mat and fold it and tuck it in there. And now you have a fantastic surface to bead on. A lot less. The only thing is you can't stick your pins in that soft edge. What I ended up doing was I took one of my beading mats and I ch chopped it up and I trimmed it to just a little bigger than the inside diameter because what I didn't want was it to fit like this and have beads and needles go in this crevice because you know they will. <laughs> so I made it just a little bigger and now I can kind of tuck it in there. And this is awesome. It's just perfect for a bead weaving product project where you have a bunch of seed beads and you have them arranged so that you're picking up your beads as you're working. And if you need to move it off your table, you can just pick the whole thing up. I think I need six of these. <laughs> So that is the set of three bead design boards sold at bbcraft.com for $17.76 and they do offer free shipping on orders over $25 to the United States. I was really pleased with this. Now I'm going to show you another product they sent me and it's this, the rhinestone picking tools. I've tried a few different things over the time that I've been working with like flat back rhinestones, mostly in polymer clay. And, and none have been that great. I haven't been happy with most of them. So what these are, you get 10 in a box. I'm not quite, quite sure why you need 10. Maybe I'll find out. But what you need to do when you get them is sharpen them. They come just unsharpened and they look like pencils. Here's a white Prismacolor pencil I have. It looks like that inner white stuff is a little thicker on the picker uppers. And they are not the same thing, I'll show you. This white stuff, I think it must be some sort of wax. It's kind of brittle. So I, don't, I sharpened these in a pencil sharpener. And let's see, I ended up... <laughs> cutting down quite a bit before I got a sharpened tip that hadn't broken off on me yet. So here are some little Swarovski rhinestones and here's some polymer clay. That's what I use the little rhinestones for most and look at that. Picks it up beautifully and lets you place it exactly where you want it with as much or as little pressure as you want to put. So you could really press it in if you were pressing it into a ball of clay. Sometimes what we'll do, like these are not hot fix. So what I might do is press it, let's see, I might, okay, in this case I might want the other one with the more blunt tip do a neater job of it than I just did. But press it into that ball and the ball rises up around it and creates a bezel. 
Well, that was a pretty messy job, but you get the idea. So I think having a couple different size tips will be useful for picking up little lady bitty ones. And, and it's very little pressure. I just tap it and placing it exactly where you want. These ones are hot fix, so if I wanted to bake this, the heat of the oven would actually activate the glue. Since this this white this white stuff, I believe, is wax, you'll want to. I would make a point of cleaning it off before doing anything else with it, just with like an alcohol wipe. And just to show you, yes, this looks very much the same. No, it doesn't work the same at all. I'm, I'm kind of stuck to it, but not really. So it isn't the same thing at all. It's something different. You can use these for polymer clay, for nail art, for fabric. In fact, you can even use them for seed beads or any other thing, any little thing that you want to pick up and put somewhere in particular. See, I barely touched that. Even on the, the squishy mat, it picked it right up. Place it down precisely without wrecking everything else around it, which is, like I said, has been a problem for me, is finding a tool that will do that. You can trim these with a craft blade. Carefully shave it down to an exact shape if you need it to be something precise. And these sell at bbcraft.com, a set of 10 for $8.49. So I hope you found this video helpful. It's given you some ideas for things that you can use in your crafting that are pretty useful and economical. So thanks for watching. Happy creating. Bye-bye.